you got any questions before we move on to testing? Hello everyone. Uh, I've had quite a few people asking me to do another talk through, especially speak, test center. Uh, this one is Michael's mock test and we're just about to move off now. And it's a right at the gate. Remember, mirrors, middle, right, indicate right. Uh, this is a mock test, so this is not actual driving test. Although we were, we are in speak. It was a Saturday, and there was just one examiner on. Uh, I strongly recommend you don't go in there unless it's empty. We uh, waited for the test to go out, and then we went in there. Okay, so the end of the road. Uh, Michael is going to do a right. So you remember, middle mirror, right mirror, and use them in twos uh, and right at the end of the road. And it looks fairly quiet. Yes, it is. It was on a Saturday. Uh, yeah, I think it was about, yeah, it's about 12 o'clock, just looking at the clock there. And you, this bit here where you get pulled over, sometimes in my session, it's usually like this van, it's normally there, but actually to pull up behind it, uh, this is like move off on an angle. So they want to see you either way, the traffic coming towards you as well as what's coming behind you. So you can see a couple of cars going past. And he does all right here, he does all his checks. Remember that blind spot check over your right shoulder just before you, just before you move look all around. Before you move off, look over your right shoulder, twist your neck around. Uh, traffic lights is going to go left, so remember, middle minute, left minute, indicate left. I know it's saying uh, left only, and everyone says, hey Peter, why, why do I have to give a signal when it's, you're going left anyway? Well, you've got to consider other road users, especially pedestrians. You're probably a pedestrian yourself. How many times have you stood on the corner and looked at the car, see if it's indicating? So yeah, so even though it's a left only, it's a compulsory left, you still have to go through the middle signal maneuver. Now this new road he goes in here, yeah, this was actually, with, with speak, it's, they tend to be like more or less the same, the routes, the way they go. And then you sort of veer off in different ways. So, and actually this one, he makes a mistake with this next set of lights, not these lights, the lights, the light, the lights after this. Because I give him the direction when he gets in the new road further up. I ask him to turn right at the next set of lights. Watch what happens. And you can see it's a 40. <coughs> Here we go. So I think it's, I, I, I asked him, well, I gave him the direction somewhere around about here. Uh, I said, at the traffic lights, which are just coming up on turn right. What you find with a lot of people, especially since I've come on the automatic, because I always did the manuals, is they struggle with the lefts and rights. What they generally do is what happens here. For some reason, it, it, I, it, it's, when you get anxious, you tend to look in a tunnel. So remember, he's supposed to be turning right here. So watch what happens here now. I told, asked him to turn right, but that traffic's going to the right. Now watch, see, this is where he hesitates. He's not sure. Can you see the slight movement there? So he's in this lane now. Unfortunately for him, you know, uh, that's going to likely cost him his test. He's probably have to go back over to two things. He's hesitated. So he's sort of like, oh, which way is it? I mean, it's pretty obvious it was on the right. So now his problem is, is he's in the fast lane. Now they call this the overtaking lane. He should be on the lane on the left, which is your normal position. Now he's stuck here. Now this is where it can get complicated because they don't like cars undertaking you. They look at it like if you're being undertaken, you could end up with the undertakers. So he's stuck, he's here, but you've got to get back to the left, but only when it's safe to do so. So you'd be looking in the middle mirror and your left mirror and looking if you can look over your left shoulder. He does get back. Uh, you'll see in a moment, yeah, and the car lets him in. So he did it safely, but because of the hesitation at the traffic light, because the direction was right, and if you're indicating right, and you're going ahead, now, 
you can see why there's a problem, can't you? Uh, so when the speed limit changes when you get to here, when you get to the traffic lights, this is what you want to be doing. You should be looking up as far as you can and to the sides and then checking with us. Do it again. Look up as far as you can. It's there to see. You can't miss these. But if you're looking at the car in front, you're probably looking at the floor, at the back, at the bottom of the car. You need to look up past the cars in front of you. Look to the sides when you come. So bring your, 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 your vision backwards like this to the mirrors which is the car and then behind you and then look in the far distance then the middle distance and the, sh the, the near distance is the priority that's why you need to check ahead the further along gear it does a right turn uh, let's see where is it yeah it's a bit further up here and here you go again you're reminded it's 30 again so you know he's doing 25 here. there's a bus coming up here and he does quite well here Always remember this though, remember this, you don't have to go around the bus, only go around it when it's safe to do so. Over the years people have gone on tests with my pupils and they got back in the exam and said, well, what did you go around the bus for? And went, well, I thought I had to, well, they said, yeah, you do, but only when it's safe to do so. So you just make sure you go around it when there's nobody there. Most of the time it moves off, but you got around it okay, everything was good here. He checked his mirrors to come back, uh, and that was all right. He was doing well there, considering he just made a major mistake. Because what generally happens is, you, when you make that mistake, and probably all know if you have any driving lessons, it's like a domino effect. You can't forget about it. But we've been working hard on this, uh, me and Michael. You know that, like, if you're in a car and you're driving, you have no future and you have no past. All you've got is the present, what you can see in front of you, to the sides and behind you. Remember, if you start thinking about you made a mistake before, you've got a problem. If you get too far ahead of yourself, you've got a problem. It's just the present, so as far as you can see up that road, you're going to turn right, shortly. And here, he does well here, checks the minutes, indicates, come over, everything's fine. Uh, and this, this can put people off, you know, this, the, 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 the red bit here, well, what's all this about? Well, it's actually you're just turning right. Uh, normally, some of them do a U turn here. And when it gets to this road here, uh, I'll, I'll show you. Because on on, the, on that test, you see what's his name there? I think it was John. He, when he gets to the end of the road, he's just right and the left. Well, they also, this one that they do now is when he gets to the end of this road, the direction is turn right and then when he gets into the new road turn right again but because it's so close together right the word you'll keep hearing is right uh, many of people i've actually got some on the uh, youtube channel you know when you get to the end of this road they're fine you turn right but when you go into the next road you just go into the right hand side of the road which means they've gone onto the wrong side of the road and it's because they hear right now if you've ever had this problem uh, yourself Say to yourself, talk to yourself, I've got to turn right at the end of the road and then I've got to turn right when I get into the new road, which is pretty sure, you'll get a better idea when you get to this bit now, you'll see it. It is tight, I mean, you've got to go slow because it's on a bend, park cars either side. And this was on a Saturday, so it's generally like people at home on Saturday, not the other week. So he does it right here, like this. You can see how close it is to the next. Now you see this bit where he comes now. Now he got in the correct position. But I've seen people get into that side. That side of it. And then they realise, don't realise that they're in the wrong part because they're in the part where you come in. So with the double lines going across, that's where you come out. The single lines where you go in. And pull them over here somewhere. This you're gonna get. A, it depends. It just depends how you're driving, and depends on the context of your journey. On your driving test, it, you know, they ask you to pull over. They just want to see you pull over safely. That means, with a signal, pull over. If the signal is necessary, give it. Okay. So then now, the last them to move off, and this is where you've got to make sure you do all your checks around, and the last place you check is over your right shoulder. 
make sure it's just before you move that's the last place you look is this right shoulder I'm in a bit of a bad neck as I can't turn but you turn right round like this and you can see the 20 zone make sure you look up and listen to what they're saying another tip you want to give is when you first go into the waiting room and the examiner comes out just concentrate on what they're talking to because if you're not you're thinking somewhere else you won't know what they're saying but you've got to make sure you listen I mean I had a test once and uh, not a screen and the explains with that before they went up to the test centre she had to do a, a, a vapour so because she wasn't listening because she was so nervous she just drove out towards the gate and he stopped her and said where are you going oh oh sorry so there's actually to do a reverse bay well she never did it and that was when the pandemic was on and unfortunately for her the cone got stuck Anyway, back to Michael. The cone got stuck under the back of her. Uh, it was her car, actually. She wanted to go in her car. Uh, and this is where you're going to get meeting situations. So you should be looking for places where can you pull over or where can, where can they pull over. Uh, you're generally this bit where you'll panic or you think, I want to get through here quick, I want to get through here. And generally someone turns up. Uh, and, and this one here, you can see what's going on. You can predict this, what's going to happen here. He just pulls over. That's what you're looking for. Don't try him down, down there like in a panic. Uh, and when he gets to prefer it down, he does it. He does it. Uh, we turn left. So remember, it's mirrors. Middle one first, left one second, and put your indicator on. Uh, and then he gets a bit further up here. He does another pull over safely. And that's the last thing you want is pedestrians. I don't know whether you've noticed recently, but there's a lot of pedestrians walking the road. I shouldn't laugh because I always when I see them I, I think that's my pupil on their driving test I can get around them and cope with them but you know you can imagine when you're when you're nervous you're not really experienced at this and they just walk out in front I mean that guy was okay he stopped but someone just walk out in front of you it's a bit of a shock yeah and he should pull over anywhere here these are the places where you get it because obviously I know the routes uh, so he's fine he has no you say probably safe and convenient it's not convenient to go on that driveway stay off it like he did um, so he has to say pull over they could say you should pull over where it's safe legal and convenient that's genuinely mean there might be a bus stop there or a double yellow line or zigzag or something they're just testing you to see if, you, if you're aware and when he gets to the mini round well let's see here He's checking all around by the way, he has no problem it's, uh, with his observation moving off and pulling over, it was fine. Everything was good. Here's the right, here's the, the roundabout is the right third exit. Mini roundabout. You remember you give away to them on the right. Just in case anyone's from another culture, they might be giving away to them on the left this country you give away to the traffic on the right there are roundabouts where you have to give away to them on the right then go into the middle and stop and then give away to them on the left but there be a giveaway line there or a giveaway sign so apart from the, the what he did earlier on when you begin to test it, generally the first five minutes, ten minutes can be a bit of a challenge for your nerves. He's been doing all right, but uh, well, I was with him on this, so I know what happens a bit further on. So, watch what happens. Uh, now, if you're going to take it into the, any house in the state, like we're, we're going to go now, this is the type of thing that you're going to get. I'm pretty sure you would have done if you're doing driving lessons, you would have done on my crossings which means the crossroads are unmarked which basically no one has priority so you have to slow down and check and make sure you look to the right and the left several times you may have to wait so you're going to be turning left shortly so you're coming into this way expect to come across unmarked crossroads and you might be just you might just get the one or you could end up two or three which yeah, obviously I did this with him 
And there's the first one coming up now. See where there's no markings? It's a crossroads. But you have to slow down and check. And he gets a bit lucky on the next one. He turns right shortly and then there's a card coming to the right. But the luck was on his side. I always say to people, are you lucky? Well, he gets a bit of luck here. And you'll see. So it's this next right mirror, middle right mirror. And obviously indicate. Now watch what happens here now. So you can't even see that. How much? That's just crazy, isn't it? I mean, I got a bit of a surprise myself because I couldn't see it because of the parked cars. But these things happen. Expect it to happen. Yeah, if you expect something to happen, you react half as quick as if you don't expect it to happen. So remember I was saying, expect the unexpected. And that's what I'm saying about it. When you go on these uh, houses, going into the houses in the States, you know, it's not just the unmarked crossings. You only get people, you get dogs, you get cyclists. Uh, and the roads get a bit smaller and you you're probably going to have meeting situations so here we go so where the red uh, tire post box is that's where you're going to be doing a right so it's the next right as I say check your middle minute right minute your indicator on up for right it depends what car you're in and in this car it's up for right and another one it might be the other way around Okay, so now it's next road on the left. So I like give it these tight turns. It's good to check in your middle signal middle, 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 left middle, indicate left. Be aware, I expect something to come around that corner. I'm going to take the next road on the right. So middle, middle, right middle, indicates up for the right. Be wary about this. The car, park cars are pushing you over. So watch out for something coming around the corner. Uh, and it just so happens, if you watch it here, he gets a bit of luck. That's what you want, isn't it? You don't want to be stressed out while you're having a driving test. Uh, if you come across a, a meeting situation further up here, but I think the other driver uh, helps him out, which is what you want. That's where you get a bit of luck, you know. And here you go. How oh, good is this driver? <laughs> if I was sitting in the back there, I'd be clapping. So here you get another uh, roadworks, sorry, crossroads. And see the way you slow down, checked. But some crossroads are not too bad. You can you, you get a better view. Some of them are. This next one is is a bit of a blind spot here. I can't remember which side it was. It was, it was something here. I think it was on the right or the left. Yeah, I think it was the right. The man. Yeah, there, there he goes again. So don't think what uh, I'm trying to show you there. Don't think if you do one or my crossroads, and you won't get any more. <laughs> you just might. You should just be ready for it. Yeah, we've got a bend coming up here, and then he takes the next road on the right. So remember, remember when you're doing the crossroads and you're going straight there, just check the mirrors behind you. That's so that you can brake safely. Uh, this one here, mirror, middle mirror, mirror, right mirror, indicate right. So the state of the left, the roads are very small here. Sure, he gets another meeting situation here. Yeah. But this is a test route, so I hope that it, uh, I've had a few asking for uh, for speak. I've been doing a lot, a lot of screening uh, lately. And there's somebody else being nice, which is good. Thank you very much. And at the end of this road, we're going to be turning right. And you can see the speed limit sign here. You've got to be really important you keep your eye on this because when you do it right here and you go straight ahead with the lights, you need to make sure you know the speed limit because the speed limit changes when the road goes from left to right here. You see a 40, and this is where a lot of people get in there and can have a problem. You see that 40 there, but you're going to go straight over. And if you're looking at the floor, if you're looking at the car in front of you, you probably won't see the next signs in the new road. It's pretty clear here, right? It's 40 on the dual carriage where you're going from left to right. That this, these things happen. That's why these videos are brilliant. You know, they're absolutely brilliant because you can see now, look, if you, could, if you get to, if you watch this video, I've got loads of comments on my YouTube channel, you know, here goes to 20. Loads of comments on my YouTube channel. And they're literally, literally 
it's it's unbelievable the amount of people have said thanks Peter I've just passed my test yeah I've been watching your videos all I've done is watch your videos and that's I, I haven't had an instructor I've been with my dad and it's blew my mind a little bit I'm thinking what have you been doing these well, for a couple of years after the pandemic now in this one here what they actually to do they actually at the end of the road turn right now Michael's been up here with me and we did this before and if you watch what he does right instead of getting into the right lane because he goes into a one way system at the end he goes left and this is where the mistake happens not because of this because he corrects this right he actually corrects if you see where he's going left and to do it right at the end of here he's just a heath road he should be in the right lane now he sort of realises when he sees the markings now can you see the two markings here yeah now did you see that now that was he did that late he should have been over earlier and all of a sudden he's thinking to himself oh i made a mistake here and this is where he makes a serious mistake i have to break i have to stop him here there's a car coming up on the left it slows down see this now, this thing's a blue car i think it is there sort of waiting for that other car to go through and he thought he could get out because we talked about it uh, but he couldn't unfortunately he couldn't do it because uh, you come up a hill by the time you crossed it there and then moved that car would have been on your tail so I had to put the, the jewels on him I had to break uh, fair play to me he keeps his head together a bit but then later on he loses it again uh, so that was another serious uh, fault So remember, if you're going to pull up in front of any car, you don't want them to do one of the four S's, stop, swear, swear, slow down. So obviously he would have pulled out and that's, that car would have had to slow down. Probably it may have to break to stop and let him out. Probably might have beeped at him, which would have made it worse. So it was just a massive awakening, another 30 seconds. It wasn't a problem. I think it came from... I mean, he's in the twenties only, so look at that car, the way they go past, you know. And no consideration for learners, it's getting worse. Okay, so he's going to do a right here at this junction. You want to watch where he goes here. A lot of people make a mistake here. They don't see that uh, no entry signs on the right, and they end up turning that way against the traffic. You have to go into the middle and stay left. So he recovers really well here. What you want to do, you want to sit back here, somewhere about here, stop your car, have a bit of indicate right, and just wait here, because you want cars to go around you. You don't want to go too far out, otherwise you'll block them, because cars turn into there. And you see the speed limit, uh, speed limit change again. 40. Now we had, we had a bit of a glitch here. It, uh, I think he has a bump or something like that and it goes off and but it just goes off and we end up going straight down that road. But this one is if you're coming down this road, always say to yourself, there might be parked cars. It generally is, it's usually like a, like a van there with a yellow and red stripe on it. For some reason it always seems to be parked on the on the on the corner, but you can't see it as you're going straight. And I say to everyone, just get over to the right the right lane. And basically, you're bound to be a parked car there. If there isn't, then you're in happy days. But you don't want to leave it till you get to the bend. You can see them before you get to the bend. And unfortunately, I have to take action because he hesitates again. Um, and we've been down here before, and we've mentioned this before. I'll just show you though, when you put them under test conditions, I mean, I'm just playing a role play. What you can hear is because the, the, the voice is on this one at the end. It was quite funny what Michael said. Because I said, you know, you have to say I'm going into role play. I'm playing the part of the examiner. So uh, I play the part and the one that's got gonna that's not gonna be too good, you know what I mean? Yeah, it is. So now if you're coming down here and you've got the spring woods there where you do the what's the name? Uh, the cemetery. Now see the here now. Watch what happens. You can see them through the trees. Here's the van. Now he hesitates here. The traffic's coming up on the right. I have to grab the wheel here and move him over. Because he wouldn't move. He just froze. And it's just froze because the car was coming up behind us. I think it was about three cars. 
Now his head's fell right off because I've had to grab the wheel and shove him over. It was too dangerous, you couldn't stop. And I had to get him over before that traffic came up on us, which was right behind us. Here, when I say to him left at the end of the road, he's, he's not sure where to go here, look. But he recovers. So, middle and middle, in the key left. And there's the speed limit change. You've constantly got to keep looking for these speed limit changes. It's just a matter every time you turn from one road to the other, just glance up. If it's not there, which I'll show you in the moment, that they tell you the speed limit. And it just means that the, the speed limit sign's missing. And he's on his way back to the test centre now. And this is coming up to Garston Village. Just some message, that noise, just some messages from your computer. This is South Parkway, the train station. Sometimes you know the traffic lights are strange, you know so the traffic lights some days they let everyone through. And there's two people there, look, two drivers parked in the cycle lane. And I get my people saying to me, Well come they can park it there. I said, Well, you know, they probably passed the test or they haven't even got a license. Yeah. But I wouldn't recommend asking them because they, they'll probably turn on you. <laughs> now you can see the sign here, can you? So if you're going left, left only, you get in the left lane. See the middle lane? That's good to go that way as well. That's straight there. And they also do a right there. So it then explains it for you. If you want to go left, get in the left lane. If you want to go ahead, get in the middle lane. And if you want to turn right, Get in the right lane. This is one of the routes on the Speak Test Centre. As I say, I mentioned it earlier on, there's a lot of people asking me to do uh, more on Speak. Because uh, for some reason, uh, I've been mainly doing not a screen and doing the test there. And if you look at this blue card here, for some reason it's indicating left here, isn't it? Can you watch it? So that might have been his left is indicated on, oh, he's going to, it's pretty obvious, he's going to jump in on the left. Probably because there was a queue behind us. People just won't wait. They just don't wait anymore. They just jump in. Yeah, but he, has he, has he, has he left his, in? so you're sitting there thinking, has he left his indicator on, is he going to pull in? You've got to be careful. You've got to watch out. Yeah, he's jumped the queue and the taxi. Took a bunch of the poor in it. Which that's all I ever see. <coughs> Excuse me. I mean, so just save some of the lights, you know, you're only there for one day, you go one day, you're only there for like 30 seconds, and the next day you're there for a few minutes. Now this, he nearly uh, goes into the giveaway line here, 
This is the strange one, this one here. You know, when we, we're heading back to the test, I know you've got five minutes left to, to do. Or we get to I do a bike park on them at the end. Uh, but this bit here, I don't know why they've done this, but people have cut across the giveaway line. Don't go across the giveaway line. Keep it safe. He just go to your first, but he straightens it up, look, can you see? And then he comes to the left. Just don't go across until you have the arrow points left. And it's left at the light. Middle, middle, left, middle, indicate left. Now this is the bit where I said to you before about the speed limit. We look here. Okay, all you're going to get is a giveaway sign. And I'm telling you this this way, there's a cyclist thing there. But you can see there's no signs. They actually say to the supporting. They've got the same on the screen. There's one, there's a few there, they say. So he's, he's got to get over to the right now. Because he's got to turn right at the top. Not these, this is, this is a cross. And this is what you call a cross. And the major traffic lights is where the cross is. This is just a... Uh, Pelican Crossing. And you've got to make sure you time your signal right. If you do it too early, they think you're going on the match works. So it's middle, middle, right, middle, indicate right. Bangs here, this here, we hit this bump, it goes off. Can you see what happened then? That's a bad hole there, and he's banged it. You can't tell him because there's no noise, it's muted. I, I felt it myself. <laughs> and then you see the 30 mile an hour speed limit. Heading back to the speed test centre now. Take the next road on the left, middle, middle, left, middle, indicate left. Check there's no cyclists coming down in your left mirror. And as I say, we touch lucky here because I timed it. Waited for the test to go out. When the test go, went out, because there's one examiner on here on the Saturday. Uh, uh, we went in and timed it so that when we came back, he wouldn't be there. He'd be out on another test. So I strongly recommend you don't go in there when there's a test done. Go in there when the normal, as I say, when they were on, it was just what it was, it was a Saturday. And uh, we sneaked in when I waited for him, we were outside, obviously just not on camera, just, and I just waited for him to go out, give it 10 minutes, and then we went in. And we, uh, we had a little chat and then we did this, so by the time we went and did our mock test, he would have been back and then took another test out. So. It's all about timing. You don't really want to go in there when there's driving test on and say this was a Saturday. It's actually it was unusual for uh, someone to be working and speaking. Not a screen they tend to do Saturdays and Sundays. But here they don't say they don't do it much. So you can see all the markers on the floor, the DVSA numbers. And we reverse into a bay. And he does this quite well. He's looking all around there. It's important that you look. Don't go back unless you look back all around, all the way around to the right. The danger will come from your right because people come, for some reason, instead of cutting across the bay, they'll come around and sit behind you. And one of my pupils failed for it. Says, uh, this woman just would not move. I was telling her, go around and go around, but she didn't. As soon as he moved, the examiner braked. Said, there's a car behind you. She could have just gone around them, but some people are like that, aren't they? And as you can see, he's done really well here. You should see the car when he's there and he bangs the door. If you're heavy handed when you're opening the door and closing the door, could mean there's something. Think about when you get out, you get in your lesson, or in the house anywhere like that, and you're slamming doors uh, like this, bang, bang, or when you
Det kan jeg godt. Det er ikke det tåbe. Der kan jeg mere problemer. Jeg kan ikke det som. Hej, det var ikke næsten endda næsten at se den næste video. That's bye for now for me. Thank you very much, everyone.